Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where it's about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of The Blacklist. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So first and foremost, Reddington is still reeling with the information he got last episode that the person responsible behind all of this is Mr. Kaplan, Kate. And it's like trying to rationalize that, but it's like it doesn't make any sense whatever beef me and Kate had, Kate would never go after Liz like that. But then, you know, we just starts pointing out, well, maybe the actual target was you and Kate wasn't aware that uh, Van Dyke was given orders from Townsend to kill Elizabeth. So she was like, right, he's going to go after Reddington and Reddington's going to end up getting killed, but probably wasn't expecting... Liz to get caught up in the crossfires. Maybe. I don't know. I feel like... I don't know. Especially considering all that Kate did to line everything up so that... Liz would find out the truth about Reddington's situation. The bones that she left for Tom and that whole thing. So... Would she really make a move like this? I don't know. And coming to terms with that is a hard thing for Reddington. So he ends up going to uh, the one person he uh, thinks might have an idea. And we I don't know if that may it's been a while since I've seen early Blacklist. I've seen every season one time uh, when it was around the time of each of them airing. Season two and three, like I think I watched shows on Netflix because uh, uh, I got far behind on those, one of those seasons. But regardless, I've seen every season only once. And so I'm curious, was it ever come up about Mr. Kaplan having a, a sister? Uh, we get introduced to Maureen, who's basically in witness protection because she testified against a criminal, which even she's like, oh, it's ironic. I sacrificed a normal life uh, to put a, to take down a criminal. My sister sacrificed a normal life to become a criminal. But it was also because, like, right, she got mixed up in all that because she cared for Katerina and Liz. So... Maureen's kind of, Maureen was kind of kept in the dark because it's like, yeah, you're the one, I haven't seen you since, basically, she hasn't seen him, hasn't seen Reddington since post-season four, a little, probably between season four and season five, because the last time they saw each other is when she came, when he came to her to say, hey, uh, your sister died, but it's just like that she passed, never went into the circumstances of it, but she was like, right, you must have given her a proper burial, I was like, right, your sister's body was never and I think that's interesting that Maureen never really pushed too much more for that. But I guess it's like, right, the dangerous world. Because I was curious how much Maureen knew. It seems like she knew something. She knows about Reddington, the criminal enterprise that he was a part of. The fact is that Miss Kaplan is, Mr. Kaplan is one as well. But I'm curious, like, the fact is you were willing to testify against a criminal because you saw them disposing of a body, then why not Reddington? Did you only, like let Reddington slide because it was a familial connection because you had um your sister working for him so taking down Reddington would have put your sister in a very complicated position is that why I don't know and maybe that inconsistency there might play into the rest of the episode because because it turns out Kate was very close to someone a Clara Moore who was her protege but also it seems like a lover and Reddington's trying to find her, but the easiest way to find her is through Laszlo. Well, because he actually tried to go to Dr. Wallace because Wallace, who's like, because Laszlo is the main crux of this episode. He's the blacklister that, which, you know, he, uh, him and, uh, because he went on a killing, well, him and his people. Like, at first I was like, well, what's this whole lion thing? Because I thought when he went to try and kill Wallace, I thought, oh, he's going to bring the lion in to kill Wallace. It's like, oh, no, he's pumping so much LSD because that's, uh, that's their product. Once again, that's supposed to be like criminal um, drug dealer 101. Never get high off your own supply. That's kind of like the number one rule in that world. At least that's my understanding. And, uh, but yeah, he's so high all the time from the LSD and he pumps it so much that it's basically permanently damaged his brain. They even give him like that nickname, which is like a Hungarian, um, uh, word for lion because he sees a lion all the time or something like that. Uh, 
But Wallace, and the moment he, it was fishy from the beginning, the moment Wallace was like, yeah, I didn't see the person. It's like, I thought that was interesting considering, like, he never said that people were wearing masks or anything, but, like, there was a gunshot um, at the door. So it's like, you probably would have seen them face to face. And we as the audience know he did. So, like, so why are you not telling them it was at Laszlo? But it's because him and Laszlo were in business together, but he decided to go his own separate way and go legit, which obviously... A, a drug dealer is not going to be happy about a um, medical company or whatever legitimizing the illegal drugs they're selling because they're trying to legitimize psychedelics like LSD and um, stuff of that nature and acid and such so that um, they could like be a help to people and can, can be used in good ways and they're trying to find them like make them more illegal but it's like right that cuts into drug dealers profits when you're the legal stuff they're selling is becoming legitimate because it's like right you don't have to go about the shady means of coming to me a drug dealer if you can literally legally get it from you know your local drugstore or something like that or like at very least get prescribed it by a doctor or something so there's that whole angle to it so but i did expect the whole because because Lazo said, like, oh, you thought you could kind of go your own way. I didn't know what that necessarily pertained to, but it's like, right, they used to be full-blown business partners until Wallace went his own way. So Reddington wanted to find Wallace specifically so that he could find about Clara, but the only person who knows about Clara's uh, location is Laszlo. So Reddington brings Laszlo in by being like, oh, I'm offering you, here, I'm offering you Wallace. Oh, Wallace, you're running your mouth too much about how he'll kill you, blah, blah, blah. It shoots him. I was like, okay, this is a whole, whole performance thing, isn't it? So, Laszlo, and, and I love that. Right? He's like, oh, I'll call him my cleaner. Oh, wait, what? Oh, I forgot about that. I was like, well, my one of my cleaners is uh, in the middle of a flight right now. Wait, the other, one, uh, the other one's in New York. It's going to take a couple hours to get here. He's like, fine, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to bring my own cleaner. Ends up being Clara. It's like, oh, pretty, uh, pretty sneaky. Uh, and Wallace gets to go and continue to do what he's doing, but, like, uh, I forgot what the, the place that, um, that Reddington was suggesting, like, oh, you go here. And so, it's like, right, also, while you're going off doing your thing, send us a sample or two back or something like that of the psychedelics he's working on. Because I even love that Reddington's like, oh, yeah, there's not more relaxing than basically, uh, going on, like, an eight-hour acid trip or something like that. But find Clara, apparently, at least she cl well, claims to not know that Kate was like, wait, Kate's alive? It's like, oh, did you not? Oh, did, was that a genuine question? Or were you just trying to hide that you actually already know the answer to that? Because I love that it's like, oh, you know about me and everything. So it kind of saves us the trouble. And Reddington says that regardless of how things played out between me and Kate, she was always someone that was important to me. It's like, I actually didn't kill her, which I, I find funny because it's like, you didn't. But you did, you attempted to, because you tried to kill her before uh, headshot her, but you missed it. Well, didn't miss, but it didn't, it wasn't the fatal shot you thought it was going to be. She came back with a vengeance and then potentially killed herself. But um, Randy Tim was like, yeah, regardless of anything, she's a longtime friend. She was your first ally in this criminal enterprise you built. Like, you guys go that far back, especially with the whole Liz thing. And she was kind of by your side through it all, the ups and, and everything, and she wants the closest ally, friend, and confidant. So, knowing she's back and potentially come at you, once again, layers upon layers of complicated feelings. So, Reddington is like, oh, well, I've got a friend of ours, of, of Kate's, that will help you. And she's like, and I love that Clara's like, Brimley? And I was like, who's Brimley? And I was like, oh, I didn't realize that was Teddy. Because Teddy's always Teddy. So, I didn't realize, I was like, at first I was like, is she is he referring to Teddy? But it's like, yeah, that's who he was referring to. I feel like they never really refer to Teddy. I go with his Teddy a nickname, because I'm not sure. I would assume it's like, oh, his first name's like Theodore Brimley or something like that. I didn't realize, like, his like I, I don't ever, because Reddington always calls him Teddy, so I never remember Reddington ever calling him Brimley. So, like, I'm assuming, like, that's, like, his, his last name. So, I find it funny that, like, Clara's like, Brimley? No, 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 no. And it's like, he's like, no, 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 don't worry. Which is going to take you? It's like, that's, it's like, right. She's known enough of Kate's associates and stuff. So, uh, ultimately, uh, Teddy was able to get some information out of her. Up until two days ago, she wasn't aware that Kate was still alive. But then she got a note saying, like, right, I'm sorry, I got it so much to explain. Meet me in this location, like, uh, that that day at, like, 10 p.m., that being Friday. So, like, they had a couple hours until they, it was time, it was, like, what, two hours until the meet or something, so... 
I'm going to go ahead and jump to the end really quickly. I don't think that's Kate. I'm like, the fact is they made such a point during that conversation that Red and Tim was like, oh, do you, um, oh, you remind me so much of your sister. It's like, yeah, we are, we were, we were close in our own way. Even saying that, do, does she regret it? It's like, no. I mean, uh, regret the whole, uh, turning it that criminal and stuff like that. And she was basically like, uh, answering the question. She was like, right. Like she had to give up. She had her dreams and stuff like that. But part of me wonders if there's some correlation there where it's like, no, I want to screw you over because you killed my sister. Like, my sister maybe left some, got, got in contact with me before she died. Because now part of me is almost wondering, like, you don't think all those times Liz saw Mr. Kaplan, it was actually her sister Maureen. Because from a distance, they could easily be mistaken for each other, especially because I think that's her at the end wearing a wig. I could be 100% wrong and it ends up being Kate, but I'm like, it seems more likely... Kate is actually dead because it's like, right, why after all this time? Like, it must be that Maureen must have been planning this years and years in advance. And so that would also make sense why the whole Liz thing happened because it's probably a thing of maybe uh, it didn't work out because um, Maureen isn't the criminal like person that her, she didn't have the criminal mindset like her, her sister. Her sister nearly destroyed and brought Reddington to his knees because. She knows, she knew uh, Reddington so well. They b basically were hand in hand together in building the empire, empire, empire that he had built. So, I'm curious. And I'm also going to spitball and throw this out there. You don't think Weech is in on it, do you? I don't know, I just think it's suspicious that Weech was like, no, no, we'll go in there. I get it, it's like, because Reddington was reluctant to see her again. He was always like, right, if I ever saw her again, I've always wondered what I would say. And just he didn't know if he could necessarily face her. So Weech was trying to help him and protect him. But I'm also like, could that be a setup? Because I'm like, someone's got to be helping her. Nah, once again, I don't think it's Kate. I think it's Maureen. Either Weecha, but it's like, Weech is so new to this, I wouldn't think so. Marvin, Reddington talked to her, was like, oh, you think Kate's alive? I'm like... Damn it, Marvin, I don't trust you. I feel like Marvin's been probably, like, playing this for a while, so... I don't know, man. I do not know. So that's... I'm, I just don't know who to 100% trust on, under these circumstances. Especially for Harold, too, because it's like, right, you're gonna, like, why would I get mixed up in all of this? But it's also like, right, the task force did... was complicit in a lot of stuff that let Reddington do what he did. And maybe that's also why, uh, if it was Maureen, why she killed Liz, because regardless of how uh, Kate felt about Liz, it's like, you still stood year after year after what he did to my sister. You still stuck by him. You always were by his side. And yes, there was a flip-flopping of like, yeah, you were here and there, but it's like, maybe that's also, let's, like I said, if we go by the notion that Maureen was, like, anytime Liz thought she saw Kate and that thought that was in her head, maybe it actually was Maureen kind of messing with her, and what if Maureen was like, wait, you still didn't do it in the end? I'm, I'm gonna do it myself, and ended up killing Liz because, it's like, right, you'll always get in the way, and I can't, I can't let what he's built continue because it, it will be on the backbones of my sister's death, so it's like, right, I don't even want you to continue, so she tried to destroy, and he went missing for two years, so it all worked out, so he lost everything, he was crushed and broken, just like maybe she was after her sister's death, so I think that's what this is all about, I think this has all been Maureen's revenge, those are my current thoughts, could easily be wrong, we'll have to wait and see, I also really quickly want to talk about the Rohilio bit, I love that whole thing of like, right, he was looking for, uh, when uh, Red was trying to find Wallace, because he was on the run, because he knew that the uh, FBI was coming after him, plus he knew Laszlo was coming after him too, and so he, Wallace is on the run, and he needs Rohilio's connections to uh, find him, but Rohilio's like, yeah, I'm going to take, try and become a full-blown citizen, I might, I'm going to have my test in like two hours, but Red is like, no, 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 you put out the word, bunch of people, and I will, uh, you know, test you, and so like, Reddington's like, quiz him in the back. I'm like, I can't believe this is happening considering the circumstances. And I love this. Like, Rogelio kind of stumbles on like the three different branches of the government. And he's like, oh, you almost have, you have this. Uh, and like, I love that Reddington gives him examples and stuff like that. Uh, I forgot what it was, but the answer was Hamilton. And like, um, it was a roundabout way to get to Hamilton, and, and Rogelio was like, oh, Hamilton's like, yeah, there you go, and then later on, he was like, the legislative branch is the branch, I couldn't remember, he's like, see, I knew you had it, but I love it, it's like, one of the questions I thought was a great bit was, oh, 
Oh, why do we pay federal taxes? He's like, oh, God, let's just skip this one. And he's just like, I'm getting car sick. It's just like, I love it. It's like, as a criminal, of course you would have that perspective. But I just, I thought that was such a nice little bit. But I also thought it was interesting, too, because, like, Weechie the entire time is smiling. Because I guess it's like, right, just seeing, like, how helpful you are. And I maybe get, you know, because, like, from time to time you get to see Reddington's sweet side like that. So it's just interesting. I thought that was, like, a nice little bit. Just, you know, I wanted to highlight that. Tying also into all of this is the whole situation with Wrestler and Cooper investigating uh, Reginald Cole and LaCroix um, and ended up searching through his files at his house, which his wife was like, no, my husband was a good man. And it's like, seems like the more we look into it, the more and more it seems like your husband wasn't, sadly. Like, I mean, that's the sad thing. Like, you, you kind of don't know what people are really up to, what they got mixed up in. But she's like, no, my husband was a good man. And it turns out him and Cole were potentially investigating some guy named something March. And, but there was no legal stuff set up for that. So it's like, right, what were they looking into him for? They confront the guy and March is like, yo, this woman came forward about some sexual assault allegations against me. And these guys showed up and they're like, right, pay a ransom, basically pay like 1.5 mil or we're going to put through the paperwork and you're going to get sued. So he discreetly paid it. But it turns out when a uh, wrestler really looks into it, turns out that that woman had nothing to do with. Now, that's why I'm like, I don't, I, at least she did wasn't represented by them, so that's why I'm like I don't know if, she, if that's suggesting like even the allegations weren't made by her that those were made up too, or at the very least the money situation was made up. I don't know if the entire thing was or just part of it. I I, I was kind of a little uh, I I um, was kind of a little confused in that part, but like you know, ready uh, wrestlers like man, it must have been quite the scam and stuff. But that's the thing for Harold, especially because time is ticking down. He's only got like what a month in totality. Who knows how much time is necessarily passing? More and more time is passing, and they're no closer to finding out. Cause whatever Reginald and Lacroix were up to, it's like yeah, but that it, it don't seem like it's connected to Harold's situation because it. It's weird to say this. That seems so small time. For like the large criminal conspiracy that's at play here, that seems so small time. Why get someone like that involved? But it's like, right, I guess you want small time crooks and criminals because you know they'll go above and beyond. Like they're not like the most like high level criminals. And so once again, it might play into if this is Maureen, maybe these are the only type of criminals she could get access to. Maybe she has some connection to them in some shape or form. Because I wonder, could one of the cops that may have helped with the whole, uh, could Reginald Cole have been one of the cops connected to Maureen uh, when she turned on that criminal in some shape or form? I don't know. Once again, I, I'm, I'm not letting this Maureen thing go. Like I could end up being super wrong, but that's where my mindset is about all of this. Cooper was kind of just frustrated because, once again, it's like we're no closer to an answer. We don't know where this all is because it's like, right, it's easy for you to say we just have to keep moving forward, Donald. Like, it's your your head isn't the one that's on the chopping block. So he goes and spends time with Agnes and Charlene and comes back and is like, right, I'm sorry. I've got to clear my head. Um... But you are right. We got to keep moving forward. Uh, there's a he's like I've got to remember what's important. And you, Donald, you are one of those people at the top of the list. And because he's like I appreciate you doing this for me. And Donald's like I know you would do the same thing for me. He's like right. Whether or not this is connected to my case or not, we'll ultimately have to just keep pushing forward. Now with the whole Kate situation too, it adds an angle to this whole, adds a whole other layer to this whole situation for um, Harold. So. There's that. Then there's also the whole thing with I thought was kind of interesting where like uh, Aram is not enjoying his job. And I love that Res Reddington still is reluctant to work with Aram. It's like, right, the whole LSD and acid thing was like, oh, maybe it'll help him unwind because he's, you know, it'll loosen up his sphincter because it's like he's wound too tight or something like that. And it's like, yeah, cut him some slack because he's stressing out because he's got to basically evaluate the team. And he's like, yeah, you guys go ahead. Well, I do the ton of paperwork while I evaluate my friends and coworkers. Yes. Yeah, love this job. It's a great job. So he's got to do that. But then Alina comes to him and is like, right, are you going to mention my circumstances? It's like about the headaches. It's like, oh, how is that? It's like, oh, they're better. Like it barely comes up. The only thing, you know, if, if I get hear any really loud sounds or bright lights. And the moment she said that, I was like, that's going to come up, isn't it? I mean, considering what your job is, I was like, you're going to be around 
loud sounds like gunfires uh, pr- pretty I don't what, I don't know if I'd go as far as saying daily thing but at least the cases we see over the course of the show gunfires are pretty regular things so I figured that'd be an issue but I guess it's like as long as it's not right next to you it's super super loud you know but uh, she was asking Aram not to mention it in the uh, evaluation he was like I because it's like yeah he's a stickler for the rules and it's like you know, maybe it might be the right thing to do, but Alina's like, if you do that, they'll most likely take me out of the field, and I need to be out in the field. That's where, like, I shine. That's where I do my best work. Like, if I'm behind a desk, that's just not where I want to be. So, Aram's like, I'll just think about it. And so, ultimately, he decides, and we don't know if he did this for the others or whether this was just Alina. I'm assuming it was going to be everyone, but he's like, no, I'm going to leave it to you to evaluate yourself. He's like, I'm going to trust you because he's like, right. I haven't been, I've, I'm shaky right now with my own circumstances, so with me being shaky as I am, how can I give a proper and fair evaluation of your circumstances? You should do it. He's like, I'll trust you. Whatever you decide to include and not include. And I thought like, oh, this was like some uh, Yoda, like uh, reverse psychology type of thing of like, oh, you knew that she would do the right thing in the end. It's like, well, being out in the field ended up making her do the right thing because while she was trying to go after Lazo, he ended up shooting a shot off inside that container. Because that's also the thing, too. It wasn't just like it was right beside her head. It reverberated off of that um, container. And so it was even, even louder. So so that sound just kind of reverberated back to her. Plus the headache and the moment she came out the container, the sunlight, it just all hit her at once. So she uh, ultimately included it in her um, evaluation because for her, she's like... Um, how can I get on wrestler for his drug addiction being a risk to everybody? She's like, I might be, you know, kind of have my disabled situation going on right now, but I'm not going to be a hypocrite. So how can I call out wrestler for his situation that could put people in danger when I'm doing the same thing? But Aram is like, yeah, but if you do this, they could take you out and feel. She's like, yeah, but even if they don't, if they, even if they choose not to, you should. And she, you know, it's like, right, trying to do the right thing because she doesn't want to, no matter how much she enjoys it, this is where she needs to be. It's like, you know, I don't want to endanger and put anyone else's life in danger because of me, Lazlo ended up getting away. Luckily, uh, Lazlo reached out to Marvin to try and get out of, you know, away from the FBI and stuff. So, um, they know exactly where he is because of Reddington. So that's probably going to be wrapped up like in between episodes. If that's not something that carries over the next episode, we'll see. But a lot of really, really interesting things. So I'm excited to ultimately see where the next episode ends up taking us going forward with all of this. Uh, but really, that's all I want to talk about. To the next one we meet, be happy, be safe, love life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.